Hey guys, if you like this video, consider subscribing, then hitting the bell icon right next to it in order to get notified when I upload videos in the future. Until then, enjoy. As Mike would say, is DVD ironic now? I like movies. In fact, who the hell doesn't like movies? That's like asking a girl, do you like music? Of course she likes music. What are you, dumb? I mean, in this day and age, we might as well have Hollywood be its own country with the amount of money it's ranking in. But with the rise of streaming and online content, it's pretty hard to argue the fact that why do we even need physical media anymore? We can watch it from anywhere, from our computers, our tablets, to hell our game consoles and phones, to even the tiniest little screens. And you just gotta see Pretty in Pink for the billionth time. Remember when Molly Ringwald was a thing? Well, I don't. I wasn't alive. But either way, with the rise of streaming, it's apparent that physical media is going to take a downturn in terms of sales and numbers. So you're probably asking yourself, why do I have my physical DVDs and Blu-rays? Why do I keep them around? Hell, I can watch those movies online if I choose to. I could just get rid of them or just sell them to people on eBay or Craigslist or just give them to my friends and family. But I still want those movies in my collection. Oh, but my computer doesn't have a DVD or media optical drive. I guess I can put it in my game console or DVD player. But that requires getting up. But you know what? I still like my movies and I still want to keep them. Even if I do get rid of them, I still paid for them and I have the right to watch them. So in today's tutorial on Maximum Tips, we're going to be taking a look at how to convert those DVDs that you have lying around into something you can watch in a more digital manner, aka ripping DVDs, and the easiest way to stream your old collection. Now the first thing you're probably asking yourself is, is this technically legal? Am I breaking the law in any way of ripping a DVD that I technically bought and own to watch for myself? and will literally do nothing else with, with no monetary gain whatsoever? Well, as long as you can tell by my sarcasm, then not really. Also, if it's such a dangerous thing, why didn't they just get rid of CD rippers and DVD rippers in general? They literally do the same thing, right? I mean, what? But anyways, let's get started on this process, and it's relatively simple, and you'll just need a couple of things. So the first thing we're gonna wanna look at is the movie that we are going to rip. In this case, I have a pretty damaged case here of Young Frankenstein, one of my favorite movies of all time. But as you can see, it's getting kind of old, with a lot of rips and tears. But at least the DVD is in good condition. The next thing we'll need is our DVD ripper. In this case, I have an external one that I got off Amazon for around 20 bucks. Of course, you can always pick them up either at Staples, Walmart, or any big box store, or on Amazon for cheap. Hey, it's me and I'm on your screen, and I'm going to direct you throughout the entirety of this episode. But once you have those two things, we're going to download our software. So lucky for you, I made a pack with all our software included. All you have to do is go to the link below or type in what you see. This will open up a link to Mediafire, which I'll use to store all my project files from now on. But once you go to this link here, click on the checkbox to the left and then you're going to click download. A new tab will open, then just click download again. Now all our files will start downloading. While that's going on, I'm going to tell you the three pieces of software that we're going to be getting in this pack. The first is a program called Handbrake, which will be used to rip the video file from the DVD. Basically in a DVD are different sectors of a movie. The main video file which our movie contains is the one we'll be getting. The rest are all behind the scenes and menu files that we really don't need. We just need the movie itself. The other file is a DLL that allows us to rip encrypted DVDs which we'll be putting in Handbrake's program directory after we install it. And lastly is a program called Plex Media Server. If you haven't heard, Plex is an awesome program that allows you to view all your movies, TV shows, media, or whatever from different locations such as your computer, tablets, or any other place in the world. All you have to do is sign into your account and you're able to view your media, as well as share your media with other people. So it's just another way to view our movie in different locations. So once our pack is downloaded, we're going to open it and unzip the files onto our desktop using whatever zip program you have. 
Then we're going to install Handbrake first. Just go through the installation wizard as normal, and the desktop icon should appear. Next we're going to put our DLL in the Handbrake program file directory. By going to our PC, the C drive, program files, and Handbrake. Then we're going to drag our DLL into the folder here. And now for the fun part. Open your DVD drive and put in our movie. And now open Handbrake. This may look intimidating, but the program is actually pretty easy to use. But I'll go over it in the most basic way possible. You're going to go to Open Source, and then you're going to select the CD icon. Handbrake will then do its job and scan the DVD for the actual movie. It may take a bit depending on the write speed of your DVD drive. But once the screen goes away, you'll have a whole bunch of options to choose from for encoding the movie itself onto a video file. Below are a bunch of options to customize how your video file will look. So automatically we'll be getting this size right here, which is around 480p, as you can see from the source as well. So under the presets, we're going to select very fast 480p 30, which will be the general output for all movies that are on DVD, usually widescreen movies. But of course there's also other options to choose from, like different audio sources or subtitles. But right now we're just going to focus on getting the movie onto the video file itself. But once we have our preset selected, we're going to set a destination. So we're going to click on Browse and make a new folder for our movie. You don't have to, it's just a habit of mine and it's a good organization. But more on that later. Now inside our movie folder, we're going to select a file name, in this case Young Frankenstein, and then the file type. In this case I'm going to do MKV, which is a pretty flexible video container. You can do MP4 if you want, it doesn't really matter. Now once you do that, you're going to click on the big green play button here, and your movie will start encoding. Depending on how powerful your processor is and how fast your CD drive is, the duration may vary depending on those factors. But once it's done, you should have a working movie in your folder. Now we're going to set it up in a way where you can watch your movie from any location you desire, as long as you have a stable internet connection. And that's where Plex Media Server comes in. So we're going to click on that and hit install. Then once it's done, you're going to click on the icon on your taskbar below. And then a browser window will appear. This is where you're going to create a free account. Once you do that, we're going to go through the server setup. What Plex essentially does it scans your media in a particular folder, organizes it, and downloads metadata so it looks beautiful. So say for instance if you have a whole lot of movies, you can choose from a beautiful interface. And best of all, you can play anywhere from your Chrome browser all the way to your TV or consoles. It's a very flexible app. Also, I'm not a paid sponsor, I just like using it a lot. So we're going to take the movie file that we just made and put it into the videos folder on this computer. So once we reach that point in the Plex server installation process, we can select said folder and what type of folder it is. Like for instance, this is our movies folder. So Plex will scan all the metadata that it has gathered and select the correct ones for the movie that we have. In which case we're going to get a bunch of young Frankenstein art, poster art, behind the scenes details, and a bunch of metadata, which includes the description, summary, and who's in it. Very convenient if you ask me. But there you have it. So all those old DVDs that you have lying around, put them to good use once again, and have them digitally backed up forever. And maybe give those DVDs to someone who's less fortunate than you. Or Solom, I don't care. I'm just a guy on the internet that knows cool and cheap tricks to do with cell phones and crap. But seriously guys, I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you guys like this new style. If you want more videos, be sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon in order to get notifications because YouTube is crapping in on itself and there has to be at least someone to pick up the pieces.